Welcome to day 7 of my 12 days of Christmas challenge. Today I'm going to be making another pick in the midfield, with the deep line or defensive midfielder being selected. This position has actually seen a lot of talent over the last 30 years, but I've narrowed it down to 4 names. Xabi Alonso was an excellent player across his career. Beginning with Real Sociedad in his native Basque country, he guided them as captain to second place in the Liga in the 2002-2003 season, finishing just two points behind eventual winners Real Madrid. In 2004, he moved to England with Liverpool and helped his team win the Champions League in 2005, scoring the equalising goal as Liverpool fought back from 3-0 down before eventually winning on penalties against AC Milan. After five years in England, he returned to Spain with Real Madrid, where he helped them win a league title and the Champions League in his final season with the club, although suspension ruled him out of the Champions League final. After that, he spent three years in Germany with Bayern Munich and added another three league titles to his trophy hall. Internationally, he was a member of the excellent Spain team that won two European Championships in the World Cup between 2008 and 2012. Overall, he won 114 caps with La Roja, which makes him Spain's eighth most capped player. Another player just missing out is Sergio Busquets. Busquets was an excellent and key player for Barcelona for a long time, but in truth it's the last few seasons that I've seen him miss out, as while he's still superb on the ball, his legs aren't carrying him around the pitch in the way they used to. He has played his entire professional career with Barcelona and got his big breakthrough when Pep Guardiola managed the B team, with Busquets key to helping them win promotion from the Segunda B. When Pep was promoted to the first team, he brought Busquets with him and it wasn't long before he had ousted Yaya Toure to make the defensive midfield position his own. He's closing in in 600 appearances with the Blaugrana and in all competitions has won 8 La Ligas and 3 Champions Leagues with the club. He has won 120 caps for Spain, 7th most capped in their history and was a member of the 2010 World Cup and 2012 European Championship winning squads. Another player I had to really consider was Roy Keane. Strictly speaking he was more of a box to box midfielder but in United's best midfield he was deeper than Paul Scholes and I make the rules so I did consider him for this position. Keane's career began with Cove Ramblers in Ireland before he signed for Nottingham Forest in 1990. He was sublime there, which attracted a lot of attention, but it was Manchester United who won the race for his signature, and for me, he was the key to their success. In 12 years, he won seven Premier Leagues and a Champions League, although he did miss the Champions League final through suspension, but nobody can forget his performance in the semi-final to ensure United made the final, when he took on his Zinedine Zidane-led Juventus team almost by himself. Few players had the drive Keane had, and there are a few players who have led by example as well as he did. After falling out with Alex Ferguson at United, he finished his career at Celtic, winning a league title there before return. Internationally, Keane won 67 caps with Ireland, although it would have been a lot more if it wasn't for a run-on argument with the FAI about their lack of professionalism, which finally exploded just before the 2002 World Cup when he famously left the squad's Saipan training base and returned home. At the time, I was disgusted with Keane. But when you consider developments over the last few years, he was probably spot on in everything he said about the powers that be in Dublin. Andrea Perlo isn't a defensive midfielder. I don't think anyone would necessarily describe him as that, but a fair description of his position would be a deep lion playmaker, which for me makes him eligible to take this slot. Perlo's career began with his local club Brescia. He signed for them as a teenager and played for their youth teams before making a Serie A debut as a 16-year-old at the end of the 1994-95 season. He didn't feature at all in 1995-96 but began to earn regular game time in 96-97, helping the club get promoted back to Serie A as league champions. Another season with the Bianca Zuri helped raise his profile and in 1998 he left the club to join Inter Milan. Things didn't really work out for Perlo within her, and during his three year stay at the club he made just 40 appearances in all competitions, but he did have successful loan spells with Regina and back with Brescia. It was during his spell at Brescia that perhaps the most important moment of his career came. He had been operating as an attacking midfielder in his early years, but Brescia had the great Roberto Baggio in that position, so he was deployed as a deep line playmaker, and the rest, as they say, is history. In 2001, Perlo made the move to Inter's city rivals AC Milan, and it worked out well for both the club and the player. Perlo would remain with Milan for a decade, and he was a key player for the Rossoneri as they once again became a true force in Europe after a disappointing end to the 1990s. Perlo made over 400 appearances in all competitions with Milan, and helped them win two Serie A's, two Champions Leagues, a Cup by Italia, an Italian Super Cup, two UEFA Super Cups, and a FIFA Club World Cup. 
Perlo had various chances to leave Milan with moves to Barcelona and Chelsea rumoured to be particularly close, but he always chose to remain loyal. However, in 2011, Perlo had struggled to force his way back into manager Max Allegri's team after injury, and with his contract expiring, he decided to move on, and Milan's loss would become Juventus' gain. Perlo's transfer sparked a change in Italian football, as Milan, who had won the Scudetto in his final season, began to decline, and Juve improved so much that in his four seasons with the club, he won Serie A four times, a cup by Italia, and two Italian Super Cups. That dominance is still in effect today with Juventus having won every league title since 2012 and Perlo now finds himself in the dugout hoping to add more Scudettos as Juventus manager. After leaving Juve, Perlo moved to the MLS for three seasons with New York City. He was linked with various loan moves whilst in the USA but resisted the temptation and seen out his time with New York until the end of their 2017 campaign when he announced his retirement. At international level, Perlo enjoyed great success with the Azuri at various levels. He was instrumental as the under-21s won the 2000 UEFA under-21 Euros. He was named as player of the tournament and top goal scorer. He also won a bronze medal at the 2004 Olympics, but there's no doubt that his greatest achievement in the blue of the national team came in 2006, when he helped the Azuri become world champions. He scored their opening goal of the tournament in a 2-0 win over Ghana and was instrumental right throughout until he scored the opening penalty in the shootout win over France in the final. His performances also earned him a place in the FIFA World Cup All-Stars. Overall, he won 116 caps with Italy, the fifth highest for the national team. Perlo's playing career is now behind him, but 2020 has seen him make the first steps of his career as a manager. It's all came around very quickly as he was appointed manager of Juve's youth team before getting the first team job days later. It remains to be seen how he'll do as a manager, but if he's able to convey the genius of Perlo the player into his players, then it looks likely that he'll enjoy a long and successful career in the dugout.